I don't believe that our current economic system actually works. Um, capitalism by design is extractive, and in order to generate profit in a capitalist system, something has to be exploited. That's land, labor, or resources. And I think that we're in late phase capitalism, and we know it doesn't work, and we've got to move into something new. There is a candidate for Denver City Council recently decrying capitalism as a total failure. And I believe in community ownership of land, labor, resources, and distribution of those resources. Amazingly, she won in the election despite her socialist convictions, or it would appear because of them. And I'm excited to usher it in by any means necessary. Such views in favor of socialism and in opposition to capitalism are gaining ground in America. A recent Gallup poll found that four in 10 Americans embrace some form of socialism. I and other progressives will face massive attacks from those who attempt to use the word socialism as a slur. But the tragedy is that you see these college students massing to his rallies and champion his ideas. His greed is destroying our nation. We wonder how these college students would respond if you went to them and said, you're an A student, but you know, there's an F student in your class, and so we're gonna give you a C and give them a C. How do you like that? I don't think they would. A recent Harris poll found that among young people born after 1980, 73% believe that the government should provide universal health care. 67% believe that the government should provide tuition-free college. And 49% said they would prefer living in a socialist country. Well, it's been in the academy for a long time. I mean, socialism has been prevalent since the 60s and 70s in terms of faculty taking that lead in the debate. I would argue that we've had some form of socialism or socialism light in this country for a long time. Uh, the welfare state. I'm calling for universal free college and the cancellation of student loan debt of up to $50,000 for 42 million Americans. But where does the money come from? It is taken by force from one citizen and given to another citizen. Margaret Thatcher had a wonderful statement. She said, the problem with socialism is that sooner or later you run out of other people's money. Here in the United States, we are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. We are born free and we will stay free. Tonight, we renew our resolve that America will never be a socialist country. It is my very strong belief that the United States must reject that path of hatred and divisiveness and instead find the moral conviction to choose a different path, a higher path, a path of compassion, justice, and love. And that is the path that I call democratic socialism. One of the byproducts of socialism is totalitarianism. Socialism never operates with, with a free people. It just doesn't. It operates with a very strict iron hand of government that gives very strict guidelines to what people can and can't do. One of the things that occurs to me is that the people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and, and many of her generation, not to be disparaging, but they were like, she herself was born a month after the Soviet Union fell and the wall collapsed in, uh, in Berlin. She has no frame of reference. But what of the biblical admonition to care for the poor? Well, some people have said that the Bible teaches socialism. They're wrong. They're simply wrong and they're very simplistic. Um, the Bible tells us a great deal about the nature of man, which is pretty basic. And the nature of man is, according to Jeremiah, the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
capitalist economies have outperformed socialist economies in terms of alleviating poverty uh, in the 20th century, in the 21st century, like no century before.